All right, there's a new version of Craft 4, which is 4.3.0, and I thought we would take a look and see what is new. Of course, this won't be comprehensive. It'll just be an overview of the things that stand out to me. But speaking of standing out, I did want to look at these new release notes that they put together. They're breaking it up by type of change or addition. So there's authoring for authoring experience, accessibility, and then administration, development, and finally extending. And maybe there's a couple more here. Let's see. Yeah, system and fixes. So you can see before it was the more traditional uh, change log style of just changed, fixed, added type of thing. And this change is nice because customers coming through and looking at this, and by customers, I mean developers who are developing with Craft, uh, it's nice to see what the different changes are pretty quickly by type. So that's nice. So let's go ahead and update a project to 4.3 and check out some of these changes. I'm going to update the Trail Quest project, and this is a site that we are building in the Real World Craft CMS course. So of course, before we run any update, we need to create a feature branch. So we'll do git branch feature, and we'll say craft 4.3 update. And then we'll check out that feature branch. Now let's go ahead and see what our updates are. I'm gonna use the make command because of my local Docker setup. Uh, I have this as part of a boilerplate project. This is based on the work that Andrew Welch did. You can check that out in the Real World Craft CMS courses. And there's other videos here on CraftQuest that talk about that. Uh, so I'm gonna do make and then craft update slash info. You can also do PHP craft update info on any system. And you can see that we're going from 4252 to 430. And I have an SEOmatic update there as well. When I run my updates, I don't use the craft updater. I just use composer and then run uh, the migration command in craft console. So I'll do make composer update and we'll get the updated packages. All right, and the migrations are done. If you uh, wanna run those manually, you can do craft migrate all, something like this migrate all that'll run all pending migrations and it looks like in the case of the 4.3 update there aren't any migrations to run so that is always good right there's less chance of something going wrong with the database all right and then we can see that we have craft cms 4.3.0 right here you can see some slight differences to the user interface as well when compared to the previous version of Craft 4. So now let's jump in and take a look at some of the authoring changes in 4.3. Just gonna highlight some of these. Be sure to look at the release notes for everything that has been changed, including links to the GitHub issues where those changes were first raised. All right, first thing first, I'm gonna go over to the entries element listing or index. And right now I'm on all entries and you can see there's something new here in the URL. There's a source key and that's an asterisk right now, which means that it's all sources, all entries. Now, if I add a new custom source here, I'm just going to add a new custom source with the uh, filter of, you know, author ID and save that. Nope, I didn't give it a name. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, you can see here I have that. And now when I click testimonials, you can see the source is the section. When I click my stuff, the source is custom and then with this UUID. Now before Craft 4.3, you couldn't link directly to these custom sources and then share the URL like in a redirect. And that's what the uh, initial issue was that was raised. So now you can do that and every one of these sources, whether they're default or custom, will have a source key as part of the URL. And speaking of the custom sources, I'm going to create another one and go ahead and name it today's work. And you can see in the entry criteria filter, so any of the filters that you work with 
at all inside of the craft control panel, there is now the ability to do date created and we have these presets today, this week, this month, this year. So I wanna to find today's work, things I created today, click save and there is my new uh, custom source. Of course, I haven't created anything today, but it would show up. And you can see just like in the last one, there is our source key of custom. So that's pretty cool. You now have some presets and we also get those on the front end inside of Twig as well as Globals. Below our sources here on the left on our element index pages, we have a new menu and this used to say uh, customized and just have a little gear, but now we have a drop down, so, so additional things can be added to it. And you saw me use that already, customizing sources. And if we go to categories, you can see it's now there as well. And if you go to assets, we get some additional options. We have customized sources, but we can also add a new subfolder, rename, or delete a folder as well. So it's a little bit uh, easier to get to. And we have the ability, especially on our entry element listing pages, is to have this drop down where additional options can be added. So a lot of time when authors have a lot of content to sort through, it's really nice to be able to sort by column and to use this view menu to then let's say sort by title. Uh, let's do something like, there we go. So in ascending order, and then maybe I want to remove this, this, because I know it's me and that, and I want, uh, let's say entry type and then close. Now, the nice thing is that this setup here, this view is now going to be saved and respected no matter uh, what happens. I'll come back to it and this will always be saved. So I can click into here, go back to entries, and then this will always be saved the way that I set it up without overriding it via the gear menus where you can then choose what you wanna have and it overrides it for everyone. This is now a user-specific saved view of the different elements. And we also get that in categories as well. And of course in assets too. So now users can more nimbly and easily customize their own element listing layouts. All right, one more thing to look at. I'm going to go to customize sources. Let's say today's work is what I have. And I wanna add another filter and we're going to uh, make it uh, expiration date. And we now have the ability to do ranges. So from this date to this date, which is something new for 4.3. So we can customize these date ranges that we want to list in our element listing. Additionally, if we add a, another filter, let's say like level, we can do level is between, and we can say one and three. Let's say we had a structure section. So we now have this is between operator for any number condition rules. All right, let's clear this up and show one more thing that I think is really cool. So we can do something where let's say my stuff, and I have the author as one, but I can also do add a filter and choose editable and I can toggle this on or off. So that way it only shows things that I can edit. And this would be based on the permissions for the group I'm in or for my specific user. So let's say that you had authors that could come in and they would see a list of just the things that they could edit, or maybe you wanted them to choose from a series of entries to add to some other entry and they're only allowed to choose ones that they own. Then you can use editable, toggle it, and that will default it to only things that they can edit. So here's my stuff right here. And if another author uh, authored any of these and I wasn't able to edit them, they would not show up here. On the twig side of things, we do have some new global variables in Craft 4.3. We now have today, tomorrow, and yesterday. And these are date objects, so you do have to format them if you want the output. And once you do that, then you can see we have today, tomorrow, and yesterday. Now these are handy shortcuts when you need to know what today is, or tomorrow, or yesterday, and then you can use them in your element queries. 
So if I just do something like this, where I say set today's post to craft.entry section, and I'm just pulling in testimonials and the post date of today and then dot all, if I do that and then iterate over the results of that, then you can see I just get one here for today. And if we look in these entries, it's this one right here, you can see I have the time set to midnight. And that's because that today means today at midnight. It's not the full range of all day. So if I change this to let's say 2.30 a.m. and save that, and then go back and reload, you can see that is now gone because it doesn't meet that exact requirement of today, which is not just the date, but the 0000, 000 timestamp of midnight of the local time. So because of that, this can be helpful as a starting point, but it won't be a catch-all that you can use for everything. So if you do want to get all of today's posts, you would want to do something likely like this, which you probably have already done in the past, but maybe using now, where I'm doing the same thing, but for post date, I'm doing and, and I'm getting greater than or equal to today, and then I'm formatting that date, and then less than tomorrow. So it's greater than or equal to midnight today, or less than tomorrow at midnight. So that gives me the exact today range that I need. And in that case, if I reload, you can see that it brings this one back and it adds another, because if we look at the date for the Richard Dawson one, it is at 7.30 today. Now, if I go in and change Richard Dawson from 7.30 to let's say 2 p.m. today, which is actually later than the current time that it is in the system, and reload that, you can see that it no longer shows it because it's in the future. And if you look at the entries here, you can see this is now orange, and that means that it's pending because it's still in the future, so it hasn't published yet. So I we still will get everything today. If I do, let's say, 7, let's say, I'm going to look at my current time. It's 11 a.m. as I record this. Let's say 10 a.m. Save that, and it will appear again. So you do still have to do a little bit of these uh, and conditionals here to check for the different dates, but at least you get today and tomorrow and yesterday as some helpers to get you maybe a step or two forward than where you were previously. So those are the major things that I want to show that are available in 4.3. You can go through the entire change log, looking at things for uh, content management. Looks like they changed that from authoring. So content management to accessibility, administration, development, extensibility. And then at the bottom, we have system. So you can see everything that has changed. So check out all the stuff for Craft 4.3. Should be a pretty straightforward upgrade for most people. And I uh, hope you found information in this video helpful. If you have and you are not yet a subscriber to CraftQuest, I encourage you to go check out craftquest.io slash join and you can get a free three-day trial and get access to everything available in the catalog. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.